My wife is a doctor, okay, which means she's accomplished more in her short life than Hillary Clinton has in her entire life. My wife is a doctor who takes care of people. She never at any point in her life sat around thinking, you know what, I can't be a doctor until Hillary Clinton, a corrupt old shrew, becomes a presidential nominee. My mom, when I was growing up, my mom worked and my dad was a stay-at-home dad. And my mom didn't sit around wondering, can I run film and television companies? I don't know. I'll have to think about whether Hillary Clinton could become president. This is all so stupid. Women, by the way, are a majority of bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, and associate's degrees. Next year, according to the American Bar Association, there will be a majority of law students in the United States. American women don't need Hillary Clinton to shatter a glass ceiling that doesn't exist. So on the way over here, we got in a discussion about the wage gap. Uh, what would your opinion on this? I mean, it's not my opinion. It's statistical fact. This is bullshit. <laughs> okay, the... the, the, the <clears throat> This, the, the 78 cents on the dollar myth is just that. It's a myth. Time magazine actually found as early as 2010 that in the 50 biggest cities in the United States, women were actually earning more than men. If they had the same job qualifications, the same number of years in the workforce, the same number of hours worked, the reason that women on average are paid less is because women take time off, they take less risky jobs, they don't take as much time at work, they would rather be home with their families. These are choices that women make. And it's astonishing to me that feminists actually degrade those choices as though it's a terrible thing when a woman takes time off. Well, it's, it's her choice. I mean, I thought that was your whole deal. I'm, I'm offended by the language of uprising applied to people who are breaking into other black people stores and looting them. Uh, this, is not, this is a lack of values. And people who, people who are destroying private property, destroying cop cars, in an uprising against what exactly? Against the black police chief, against a mostly minority police force, against the black mayor, against the black president, against the black attorney general, against the entirely, uh, against a, a city council that, that is nine of 15 are black and all 15 are elected Democrats. Uh, what is the uprising against? What is it seeking to achieve? I still don't see what exactly the, the, the riots are seeking to achieve. Bottom line is, uh, it, this is all, it, it all could be boiled down to just act like a mensch. Act like a human being. Honestly, it's not a useful, it's not useful to riot, it's not useful to break things, it's not useful to throw rocks at people. And the idea that we're supposed to sort of correlate let's, let's your level of on outrage. The idea. I'm going to stick to the 30 seconds on yeah, this the last one, Charles. Sentence, the, the last okay. sentence. Yeah. The, the idea that we're supposed to correlate your level of outrage with a certain level of justification. In other words, the more outraged you are and the more angry you are, the more justified you must be is absolute nonsense. Oh, what a milestone. What a moment. We finally have a black president. Yeah, except he's going to be the president. And it turns out I didn't need to see a black guy as president to believe that black people could be presidents in the United States. The only people who believe that are people who are misinformed about the nature of the United States by the Democratic Party and actual racists. Honestly, I have one question in all of this. Seriously, just one question. Why not just secure the border and then put a pathway to citizenship why in? Why can't those happen at the same time? Why don't you answer my question instead of asking me back why? I just explained to you why they can't. Here's why they can't happen at the same time. As you secure the border, the border remains somewhat open. People cross the border because they feel that if they get in before the deadline, if they get in before the border is secure, then they are somehow included Have in the pathway to citizenship. Bill? Of course I've read the bill. And not only have I read the bill, well, the I've been bill, watching what's happening the, on the border with tens of thousands of children the has, crossing the, the border in anticipation of amnesty. Wait, because we have no, think because there's no law right now. But in oh, the that's Senate no bill, law right we now. talk Got about it. we talk You're about right, there's no law against crossing the border illegally. We, you have to speak the language of morality. You must speak the language of morality. The left wins because nobody on the left knows anything about politics. They know you're evil. That's it. They know you're a racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe who hates the poor. <laughs> Right? That's what they know about you. And it's not they think that about you. They know that about you. Deep down, they know all these evil things about you, which is why Thanksgiving dinners are always so awkward if you're unfortunate to have Jewish relatives or, or you have friends on the left, which are the, the, the exact same focus group. The, the, the answer to all of this is to speak in the language of morality. This is why I never say the government compels people to do stuff. The government does not compel people to do stuff. The government compels people to do stuff at point of gun. Why do I say that? Because leftists are scared of guns. Right? When we say the government compels things, people say, oh, well, compulsion. Well, that's just like taxes, right? No. That's somebody coming to your house in the middle of the night with a SWAT team, with a gun, pointing it at you and dragging you off to prison for not doing what they want. The people who are suggesting minimum wage don't know anything about business or economics. Uh, and minimum wage invariably... <clears throat> Minimum wage is supposed to be an economic decision, but it's based, it's predicated largely on a, a moral vision of the world that is false. And that is that somewhere these business people who are engaged in competition with each other with ever shrinking profit margins, somewhere the McDonald's owner in his back room has a giant Scrooge McDuck money bin 
filled with gold. And each night he goes there and he just swims around in it, right? And he's, pre and he's preventing all of his hard laborers who are flipping burgers from earning their, their rightful $200,000 a year. And so we need a minimum wage. The point, the, the, the problem with minimum wage and the reason it's economically ignorant is because competition in wages leads to lower wages, right? That's what it does. Just as competition in products leads to lower prices for the products. You artificially increasing the price of labor, all that does is it cuts out the profit margin and it means that somebody is going to get, is going to have to be fired, right? This is, every time minimum wage is tried, there is, if you, if you get rid of the confounds, there is a net loss in employment because uh, as we all know, if you only have $30 to spend on your employees, and right now you're paying them each 10 bucks a head, if you'd raise that to 15 bucks a head, you have to lay somebody off. Right? Somebody has to get fired. Beyond that, it's pushing up the unemployment rate, particularly among the people who need those part-time jobs and those low-wage jobs. The people who disproportionately staff part-time and low-wage jobs are young minority folks. Right? And those people, their unemployment rate is soaring right now because if I'm going to pay $15 an hour for a burger flipper, he, he also better be able to recite cons. I mean, he better have another skill set, right? So we're going through all the most unfunny people from Comedy Central. You got Stephen Colbert, who used to be on Comedy Central and is no longer funny. Samantha Bee, who is never very funny. And Trevor Noah, who in the womb must have been just smacked with the unfunny jar. Like God, God took down the various jars to make a human being. And he took the humorlessness jar and he poured it all over Trevor Noah as a, as a prenatally. The real racists are and always have been folks on the left who wish to exploit racial division in order to pay off their cronies. The reason the education system sucks in the inner city is because the left wants to pay off its union buddies at the expense of black kids. The reason that the left has not done anything for the inner cities despite years of dominance in Detroit, the reason is because they wanted the violence. And it is about intent, it's not about effect. You know, the, the, the problem with the minimum wage is that for the left, Every argument is a moral argument, not an economic argument. So you have to take the morality of the argument away. It is immo uh, beyond that. There is a fundamental argument here. It is fundamentally immoral for you to come in and tell somebody that they are not allowed to make a free and binding contract. Okay, no one is being chained to their grill. If somebody doesn't want to work for that wage, they can leave. Right? And who are you to tell the 17-year-old black kid who wants to work for $7.50 an hour that he, is that he is forbidden by law from taking a job at $7.50 an hour? Who are you to do that? Right, this makes you a totalitarian. It's a totalitarian rule. Okay, so this is the first thing that I would say is that when they argue morality, you should not argue policy. You will always lose. Morality always beats policy. It's why Republicans lose. Right, when they argue that it's immoral for you not to be nicer to the poor, and you argue, yes, but your policies are ineffective. Okay, immoral beats ineffective in an argument any day, any day. So when it comes to purely moral issues, social issues like, like abortion, to get more specific, the reality is that this is a, abortion is not a complex issue. It's a very simple issue. That's either a life or it isn't. It's that simple. If it's a life, you can't kill it. If it's not a life, you can do whatever you want. It's a kidney, right? So, and, and then it becomes, okay, so how do we define life? And the answer to me is you define life by the same way that you would define life if you found it on Mars, right? It's, if you found a single-celled organism on Mars, it's, it's a life, right? I know as, as somebody who has one baby and another on the way, you know, that, that what's in there is not a random piece of tissue, at the very least, it's a, even if you don't believe it's a life yet, it's certainly a potential human life. And that seems to be more valuable than your convenience. And there's something nasty and cruel and degrading about the idea that you get to decide the, whether something is a life or not based on whether it's convenient to you or because it's in your body. By the way, this is exactly, it's a, it truly is amazing actually how history repeats itself. The argument in favor of abortion is exactly the same as the argument in favor of slavery. Exactly the same, right? You're on my land. I get to decide. It's up to me to decide whether you're a person or property. It's up to me, right? What are you going to say? It's on my land. What are you going to do about it? White people being able to accumulate wealth and the benefits throughout time. Mm -hmm. How can you say that hasn't put black people today at a disadvantage because of that? It, okay, it has put black people today at an initial disadvantage, but that does not mean that the rules by which they play are different than white people now. Okay, so the fact is that some people are born poor, and put race aside for a second, some people are born poor, and some people are born rich in America. Right? We can acknowledge this. Some people are born poor, and some people are born rich. That does not mean that, number one, the poor people have a right to go to the rich people and take away their money, because that's called theft. And second of all, it also does not mean that making individual good decisions does not allow the poor person to become rich. There's tremendous income mobility in the country even still. And so the idea is, if the idea is that your grandfather, your great-grandfather, couldn't go to college because of the racism in the GI Bill after World War II, and that's why you flunked out of high school, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. You know, make good decisions, you will get a better result. It doesn't mean we all start in the same place, we don't.
None of us start in the same place. Some of us are smarter, some of us are dumber, some of us are taller, and some of us are shorter. You know, that's, that's the reality of life. That's just how the universe is. The question is what we do to better ourselves. And if the idea is that you get to take money from people who were not involved in your oppression in the first place in order to rectify something that happened to great granddad, then we can play this game of historic grievance all the way down the line. The, the thing I hate the most from the right is this constant refrain, yeah, socialism, it's a great idea if only it worked. It's not true. It's an unbelievably morally shitty idea. The, basic, the reason is this. The basic premise of socialism is, I'm here, I'm breathing, give me crap. <laughs> right? I, I have an, you have an obligation to care for me. I have a right to health care. I can force that doctor to go to medical school, expend $200,000, spend her entire life learning medicine, and then I can walk into her house and force her to provide me medicine. Right? Capitalism, by nature, is the opposite. Capitalism is the idea that I will starve unless I give you a good or a service that you want. Right? If I don't give you something that you want, I'm not going to eat tonight. It's forced altruism, effectively. Right? We have to have a trade. We have to come to some sort of consensus. I have to give you something cool, and you have to give me something cool. Right? It's great. Socialism is rape, and capitalism is consensual sex. The reason I say no, I'd be happy to let people win if they're not screaming. And the reason I say no is because it's a fire hazard, and the last time people tried to create a fire hazard, they pulled the fire alarm in the middle of the lecture. Don't give them ideas. And <laughs> I know, they don't have many of their own. Okay. <laughs> For those who are watching online and can't hear what they're saying, they're saying Black Lives Matter. I agree. So perhaps you should start expending your resources where black people are being killed, namely by other black people in the inner city. When the SATs were out of 1600, Princeton University found that black folks were being given a bonus of 230 points on average by the top universities in the country. Asians were being penalized by 50 points. But that's fair, because Asians were obviously beneficiaries of Asian privilege. Because our Asian founders wrote an Asian constitution to benefit Asian people. Right, the lack of my $100,000 salary, that's because society is mean, and so we have to transform the society. And, th and that's why young people, again, 40% back speech codes in American life. This is why I think the last poll was nearing or over 40% of young people are okay with socialism. Like the actual socialism. Because they don't know anything. They've been taught stupidity, and how they feel is all that matters. I mean, there's a, there's a video that's going around the internet getting all sorts of play about income inequality. Income inequality is the stupidest issue. Income inequality means nothing, right? I mean, I'm, I have a lot of income inequality with Bill Gates, but I'm doing pretty well, and I don't care that Bill Gates is doing really well. The only thing we should all care about is that there are poor people. We should figure out how poor people can do better, not how to make Bill Gates less rich. But, what, but th this video is going around and saying, Here's a poll of what Americans think the wealth distribution should look like, and here is what the wealth distribution actually looks like. And I watch this video in bewilderment, and young people love it, and I'm, I watch this video in bewilderment and think, who told you that you get to tell the universe how wealth is distributed? Right? Who told you that you have a moral say as to how wealth is distributed? It's immoral, it's evil, it's wrong. You're going to have to steal people's labor from them. But people are not told this, and so they think that their own subjective vision of what reality should look like should govern what reality actually looks like. And it's only later, after 80 years of communist failure, that they realize, oh, that, and, and hundreds of millions of people dead, that they realize, oh, that was a bad idea. If you can't make people feel good about being conservative, make them feel really, really bad about, feel, about being leftist. You know why? They deserve to feel bad about being leftist. They're siding with an evil ideology.